Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here with Extra History. Tonight we got part three of Frederick the Great, called Forging a Legend. So, yeah. Yeah, a bit of a rough start in the campaign, though, ironically, stole his, vi well, his victory thanks to his dad's army. But now, once he's about to earn that title of Frederick the Great. So, how about we hop in and see how he manages to forge his legacy? So be sure to like Scott for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's rock and roll. April 11th, 1741. <laughs> It's the Ooh. morning after the Battle of Mulvitz. Frederick has had his first victory, and he's not happy about it. See, his general had told him to flee, that his army was about to be destroyed, so he had done so. Yet then, that same general had turned the battle around and delivered victory. Meanwhile, Frederick had wandered in the dark, nearly being captured and hiding in a house until morning. He was embarrassed, but he had learned a great deal. Mulvitz would be his school. Never again would he abdicate command to another or cut his losses when victory seemed possible. His cavalry had performed poorly, he needed to do something about that, but he also mm -hmm. saw how his advancing infantry had terrified the enemy. Huh, something to note there. And though improvements did need to be made, he had his victory, he had Silesia. And he would fight to keep it for 22 years. <laughs> Thanks so much to Ren oh. for being a simple and effective Ren. way to help make a difference in the climate crisis. Learn more <laughs> after the episode. Okay. Frederick's invasion of Silesia, on the thinnest pretenses and without even a formal declaration of war, catapulted him to international stardom. Across Europe, people scrambled to learn all they could about this rash and dynamic young king. How had a nothing power like Prussia, a scattershot part of the Holy Roman Empire, caught the mighty Habsburgs napping? Sales of his book, The Anti-Machiavel, shot up, and his correspondence with Voltaire, written on both sides with the intention that it be shared, circulated among philosophers. When Frederick Ow. had invaded, he told his ministers that he wanted to see his name in the gazettes, and boy did he get that. But in truth, this was not all about Frederick's enormous ego. It was also about putting Prussia on the map. When he came to the throne, Prussia was neither a fully independent kingdom nor a state in the Holy Roman Empire. It existed in the Shadowland in between. The soil was Oof. Yeah, this is way before Germany, so... Remember, the German states, like Prussia, were kind of scattered all over the place, so... Yeah, we wouldn't have that great tradition for a while. But, hey, thanks to Frederick, they do have a chance. So this is gonna be interesting. So let's keep going, I guess, and see what else describes Prussia here. ...was sandy and poor. Its territory separated and the population only numbered 2.2 million. Meaning, forget a superpower like Habsburg Austria. Before the war, Prussia's biggest rival was neighboring Saxony. Yet by invading Silesia, he announced that Prussia was attempting to join the great nations of Europe. This wasn't some German state. This was a kingdom. But despite his boldness crossing the border, when he entered Silesia, most of Europe assumed Trisa. Austria would crush this upstart. But then Mulvitz proved them wrong and changed everything. It exposed Austria's weakness. And if you've ever watched any of our episodes on the Siege of Vienna, or Jewish Pirates, or the Thirty Years' War, you'd know that about 80% mm. of Europe at this time was spoiling to take a swing at the Habsburgs. Many in Europe, including Frederick, also fundamentally hated the idea of Maria Theresa, a woman heading one of the great powers. Not only did they not want her ruling Austria, they also wanted to break the tradition of the Habsburg line automatically being elected Holy Roman Emperor. Of course, in this yeah, case, a woman prick. couldn't legally be elected, but Maria was pushing for her husband's election. So, sensing weakness after moments, <laughs> France, Spain, Bavaria, and Saxony pounce. All joined and in. thus, the First Silesian first War Silesian became war. merely a part of the much wider War of Austrian Succession. And if all of that sounds complicated, it's because it is. Sadly, we're going to have to gloss Succession over a bunch so of crazy. stuff since this is a series about Frederick and not this unbelievably convoluted war where countries change sides faster than Lokis in the MCU. But basically what you need to know is that at Mulvitz, Frederick had rung the dinner bell. Habsburg's back on the menu, boys. Get a piece while it lasts. <laughs> a coalition Pretty formed much. around <laughs> Prussia with the hope of carving up Habsburg lands in a partition. But Frederick worried that if that happened, these powers might get too powerful and overwhelm yeah, Prussia and go as well. to him. So Frederick's diplomats contacted their Austrian counterparts and cut hmm. a deal. They signed a secret truce so that both could recover strength while their troops still pretended to be at war. 
This lasted for a few months until Frederick, worried Maria Theresa was coming back for Silesia, reputed the treaty and joined the Allied campaign in Bohemia. But not long <laughs> after Frederick arrived, the Allied march yeah. toward Vienna broke up. So turned out, it was Frederick's God army that took the blow when Maria Theresa's brother-in-law, Charles of Lorraine, arrived with 30,000 troops to take the invaded territory back. And on May 17th, oh, 1742, hmm? pursuing Austrians caught half of the Prussian army. Dug in around a village to meet the Austrian attack, they were instructed to hold until the king's part of the army could arrive and take direct command. Frederick was not about to let a mere general steal his thunder again, okay? But once he arrived, yeah, it was still a confused engagement. Frederick drove off the Austrian cavalry with a mounted charge backed by artillery, but it was a dry summer day, and soon huge banks of dust obscured any vision of the battlefield. Central command oh broke down. Cavalry on both sides got lost, then quit the battle to pillage the enemy baggage trains. It then yeah. became a house-to-house -house brawl of infantry and artillery through the burning town that only ended when Frederick led a huge square of 24 battalions into the Austrian flank. Now, while technically a draw, the Austrians abandoned the field, giving Frederick the victory. Not to mention, diplomatically, he hey, also won out. For when the British pushed both parties to the negotiating table, Frederick once again was allowed to keep almost all of Silesia. Two months later, the First Silesian War was over. Yet he knew <laughs> this was a temporary peace, and that there was work yeah. to do. While the Prussian- Yeah, let's be real. I mean, considering like Teresa was pretty much embarrassed, you know she's gonna be holding that grudge. Whoop. I mean, we can all see it coming, right? Anyway, uh, moving along. Infantry was solid. The cavalry had performed poorly in both battles. So he Jeez. went about restructuring and reforming his cavalry forces to be more disciplined and aggressive so they'd serve him better when Maria Theresa came for her captured province. Oh, and she was going to. In fact, mm. Maria Theresa mm. had flipped the script. Right. Oh. Two years before, she'd been fighting alone against a major coalition. But now she'd set up a new anti-French alliance mm. bankrolled by Britain. And with Russia and Saxony interested in joining, oh Frederick worried she was about to seek revenge. So then he built a rival alliance between Prussia, Bavaria, oh, Sweden, let me guess, and that two German apart states, again? with the goal of restoring the Bavarian lands taken so far in the war. France also declared its oh, support. Louis the 15th, then on right? August 15th, 1744, Frederick crossed back into hmm. Bohemia, launching the Second Silesian War, which went sideways almost immediately. The campaign oh. depended on the French tying up Charles of Lorraine and his Austrians in the West, nope. so he couldn't return to Bohemia. But that went out the window when King Louis Ooh. XV fell ill leading the French army and Charles disengaged. Then Saxony oh. switched sides away from France and allied with Austria, meaning Prussia now had an enemy on its border. Meanwhile, uh -oh. Austrian guerrilla forces hounded Frederick out of Bohemia by just savaging his supply lines. And realizing Oof. this was unattainable, he pulled back to defend Silesia. Things got worse. Austria uh -huh. formed a new alliance with Britain, Saxony, and the Dutch Republic, with secret plans to partition Prussia the same way the powers had tried to carve up the Habsburg lands. Then Frederick's yeah, ally, the Holy Roman Emperor, dropped dead, and his son made peace with Austria. And finally, in May, Charles of Lorraine crossed the giant mountains into Lower Silesia, leading a force of 60,000 Austrian and Hungarian troops, plus their Saxon Ooh. allies. Frederick this knew he had good to for act. Frederick. Battle of Hohenfriedberg, June 4th, oh, 1745, okay. 7 a.m. Frederick told his troops to leave their campfires burning when they performed the night march. In darkness, they'd slipped out of camp and crowded across a bridge, right past the Austrian forces, for they were not the objective. Instead, mm -hmm. Frederick wants to hit the Saxons first and destroy them before rolling up on the rest of the Austrian forces. Uh, oh, but they they've been spotted. Shots <coughs> ring out. Prussian and Saxon cavalry clash Come together on. in a vicious night battle. Pistol flashes light up gleaming sword oh, blades. Geez. The Saxon camp begins to mobilize, Charge. but the infantry pushes through and the Saxon formations start to dissolve. By first light, the Saxon force is already routed and Frederick's right turns to engage the main Austrian force. Hours of gunpowder and blood follow, and the next day, Frederick sits on his horse in the courtyard of the palace he's taken as his own. He has won his greatest victory to date, and now he is honoring the troops that, more than anything, made it possible. The Bayreuth Dragoons, his heavy cavalry. At the climax of the battle, when things had still hung in the balance, they had spotted a hole in the Austrian line. 
And by charging through that gap, yeah. they had overrun 20 enemy battalions and captured 2,500 prisoners. They'd broken nice. the Austrians and only taken 94 casualties doing so. Now they parade their war trophies into the square. Ooh. 67 battle flags of Austrian and Saxon units <laughs> torn from enemy hands. There was still fighting to do, but when the king returned to Berlin, he would be doing so under a new name, Frederick, Frederick the Great. The Great. And you know, actually on that note, man, he really earned that name, didn't he? <laughs> Which you gotta admit, he did pretty well for the second battle. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Till next time, like, subscribe for more. Good night.